I'm going to ask you for, um, for some questions from the floor now. I mean, what often happens at these events is that we get to the end of the, the, the discussion and you know there's booze available, and so nobody asks many questions. So <laughs> you're, going to ask, you're going to ask some tonight, because you're going to ask now. So I'd like any of you who would like to, please identify yourself, say you are, and address it to the panel, or individual member of the panel as you'd like to, and ask a question. We've got a volunteer. Hello. I run uh, from ASOX, a company that do virtual uh, run, virtual base station at the edge, focus on enterprise use case. We're speaking a, a lot about Mac for the enterprises, especially in the use cases where it's relatively ha the high end of the enterprises, the healthcare, the hospitality, um, the stadiums. These organizations typically have a very large data center that runs a lot of applications themselves with strong local IT. Uh, when you look on the Wi-Fi networks, they have full, full control on the network. All the data, secure, uh, goes to the data center. Wi-Fi has it, its own uh, downsides compared to cellulars, which are knowns like security and mobility and availability and best effort versus SLA. Um, what is your opinion of allowing the enterprises to build their own Mac on the service provider spectrum using a network slice? So basically putting a, a Mac platform at the edge that allow, you know, not necessarily the carrier to force, you know, to bring the, the, the solution and to force the enterprise to run on, this, on the solution, whether allowing them to access the cellular network on a slice and build their own Mac at a much lower cost, probably. That's a hell of a question. <laughs> he hasn't been drinking enough. No, no, no. He'll keep drinking. <laughs> Would anybody uh, like to attempt to answer that? So, uh, well, it's, it's a bit difficult. Nobody has a crystal ball uh, right now telling the truth in this space. Uh, people ha will have to pay uh, for these services. And uh, the question is how uh, will the business cases finally look like? But definitely that's one of the key goals uh, also with 5G. And, uh, but 5G won't come all... Uh, with its uh, full beauty just uh, on, the, on the first service. We're going to start with uh, new radio services and then move uh, slowly into that direction. So uh, I believe we still have a couple of years ahead of us, but definitely the focus also from the business development side has to be working with the enterprises and working on, on cases which uh, are supporting these concepts and uh, make that viable as an option for the enterprise as well and will bring benefits to uh, the customer and the service provider. So, well, I mean, te technically, I don't see a, a big issue in, in, in doing that. I mean, there are some regulatory issues if it comes to our frequencies and the control over it, mm -hmm. and there are the business case questions on how to deal with, with, with the thing. But the experiments we do today with enterprises, some of them really want exactly that. Um, well, the, the, what is good is that you mentioned the third ingredient that is not in the title of the, uh, of the panel. For 5G, you have Mac, you have NV, and you have a Spectrum. Without the Spectrum, I mean, and the Spectrum is something that is extremely limited and is extremely expensive. And the point is who's going to pay for the Spectrum? And who's going to pay for the Spectrum? Because probably at the, uh, at the, ba at the, um, um, at the, some of the spectrum we are talking for 5G, probably it could be very much localized in a stadium or a very controlled environment. But anyway, spectrum is something that you, there, there are not owners, but there are someone that is regulating the spectrum and associating licenses. And so far, licenses are associated nationwide. They are not associated in this square you, you own the spectrum in the other street, you own the other spectrum. Because it's very difficult to manage. But that would depend very much on the business agreements, and that would depend very much precisely on the regulators, because the spectrum is regulated. So, who knows? <laughs> Diego, the, the interesting thing that, that Aaron brought up was that we, we actually work with HP in one of the cases in the casino. And there's a, this is a business case that because when you, uh, in the casino, they actually have uh, ladies and come up and sell cigar to you. T 
today they use uh, Wi-Fi to process the credit card payment, and Wi-Fi many times fails. And they, in fact, we were actually there. <laughs> then they asked, that you, would you go up there and, and to the, follow her to pay? Those guys said, no, we're not going to mm -hmm. get up and walk across. Yeah, have you walked through the casino filled with smoke? And people said, no. She lost sales. <laughs> you know, very expensive, you know, Dominican cigar. So in that case, they actually said, would, I would like to do this using, you know, really simple point of sales, but runs on a Mac, runs on uh, some, their uh, uh, licensed spectrum. So that is a business model you could, you could strike with the very motivated. No, no, it's technically it's no. Technically it's not an issue. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's about the, 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 yeah. the, the rules and the, and, and the money yeah. that yeah. Motivated, hands. motivated yeah, no, enterprise wants to hand over money no. and motivated operator can make it work. Yeah. I think this is the same thing that we were working with the large airline operator. Remember the private LTE? You know, the yeah. case where aircraft lands, you have private LTE yeah. to transfer the data and do the analytics of what happened during the flight. Uh, before the flight leaves, uh, you know, so you have a private LTE. So that mm -hmm. could be a case that could be made for some of these. Yeah, yeah. You got a very comprehensive answer to what was a fairly comprehensive question or intro to it. <laughs> Thank you for that. Let's have another one before we move back to our discussion up here. Uh, second question, please. Or do you want me to nominate somebody? No questions. Don't all run forward at once. Just one. Hi. Uh, from a different angle, what is uh, the missing links uh, that you believe uh, there are today that will enable you to accelerate the 5G or NFV deployment? Uh, practically, what are the entrepreneur's enterprise, uh, the entrepreneur's advice that you will get, that you will give? Uh, what do you miss in terms of components, technology, solutions? To, to, to accelerate it. Basically, I would say there is one thing that would accelerate adoption of 5G, NEV, or whatever technology, and it's demand. <laughs> <laughs> if there is people asking, I mean, willingly to pay real money for it, you will have 5G tomorrow. Almost. <laughs> now, seriously, I think that still there are a couple of uh, aspects that probably when it comes mostly to, well, in the case of 5G, let me insist, it's about the spectrum and how the spectrum is going to be allocated and how the, um, some issues about the air interface are going to be solved in a way that is viable worldwide because it doesn't make any sense that, uh, I mean, I, I remember last year I saw a, a map of the different uh, spectrum allocation by country and region and it was, when there was a, a, at least a, a, a some intersection, you have the, uh, the line in yellow. And there was only one yellow line. The rest was, was red, no, no green at all. Because there is no agreement on how things are going to be allocated. And if you don't go, go worldwide or close, at least region-wide, it's going to be complicated economically to, to go for mass production. Apart from that, I think that one of the challenges for this kind of edge computing and all the like happening is, is precisely the real challenge right now is our security. Security needs to be improved. Um, a much stronger security models have to be in place. We are talking about that, uh, uh, at least, normally we're talking about always two parties in the communication, the server, the, uh, uh, the client, the network, the user. Now we're talking at least three the provider, the network, the edge network, and the user. And probably we're talking four or five because many of the services are gonna be composed somehow. So you need a much more comprehensive, agile, and reliable trust model, and something that allows you uh, to, uh, to, to be uh, sure that you fulfill all you know, authentication, authorization, accounting, whatever, and you cannot rely on blockchains because they are extremely <laughs> complex. another round of things. There's another round <laughs> So, so the, there is a, I see that there are the strong challenge in finding security models that are trustworthy for the complicated environment and efficient enough to, enough to address all the issues. Uh, we're talking about uh, very low latency, short uh, uh, loop uh, responses. Indeed, that's tightly related as well to the cloud native discussion we had earlier. And the paradigm we're following on the, 
<laughs> the insider jokes why we are laughing here. Um, so the paradigm we are following here is, is still the um, access control list uh, paradigm most of us are used to. Now, in such a cloud native world where you have microservices which are spun up and uh, down again, and it's a very dynamic environment, and these ACL based uh, security models just won't work anymore. So you need to have the application intent uh, in there, and you need probably to have identity in there as well, and uh, that still requires quite some development work to actually achieve that. So I, I, I think we are doing quite well as a whole industry in accelerating 5G already. So I'm probably more afraid of going too fast because, I mean, exactly, so as long as security is not solved, there's still a lot of issues discussed around. But uh, as, as a whole industry, it's a major, major movement being as quick as possible. Uh, so, uh, as, as a whole industry, I think we're doing quite fine. I don't think we need more, even more acceleration on that. Thank but you very much. Sorry, Karen, do you want to say something? Yes, of course. Yeah. Go on. Uh, I understand the use of work for you know, 5G. I think 5G, uh, Mac helps 5G ROI case, but Mac <coughs> can happen ahead of 5G. In fact, we, we're yeah. doing that sure. now. Uh, uh, we, I, in fact, I, I think it must happen prior to 5G in order to solidify when 5G rolls around that, the, that the, we have done all the learning. Um, the security part, I fully understand, but I'm a firm believer you got to try it. Uh, it HP and us are just shepherd a deal through. And I'm telling you, the first time is like giving birth. You had to go through security <laughs> czar, and you had to go through CIO checking. Finally, the network guys comes and go, well, go through the network entry. You go through three times a hurdle, but you learn a lot, and you learn what not to do. You know, So we, we got to do that now. That's the, you know, my plea to everybody is like, please roll up your sleeve. You may fail, you may look foolish, but hey, I look foolish plenty of time in my life. I don't get here without looking foolish, so we got to do that. And paradigm and blockchain. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but behind the scene, if anybody say paradigm, he's buying a drink. If anybody say blockchain, I'm buying a drink. So so far, four and four. <laughs> yes, I'm buying four very small ones.